And good morning, everyone. Welcome to another wonderful Wednesday. Is it Wednesday? I lose track of time. As we will be talking about Django REST framework today. It's going to be a lot of fun. How's everyone doing? I'm going to wait a little bit for people to show up before I get going. Hmm. Well, yeah, today we will be talking about the Django REST framework, which is a fun Python web framework made for building REST APIs built on top of Django. Morning, Zach. Morning, Miracle. Nice to see y'all. I have to turn my, my excited face on. Still waking up a little bit. Didn't sleep well last night. It happens. If only I was a coffee person, but I'm not. I feel like I just, I can't, I can't do it. Morning. Good to see everyone showing up this morning. That's great. Morning, Paul. Morning, Jawage, Joywage. I can't. Morning, Roland. Hello, everyone. Okay. So, hmm. from the top of the world at Nepal, that's, yeah, that's really there. Okay, so first thing we're going to do today, we're going to talk about some, we're going to talk about the Django REST framework. So let's actually just pull it up real quick. Django REST framework. So I'll zoom that in a little bit. I wish it wasn't so small. We'll do this. It makes my life a little bit easier. So today we're going to be talking about Django REST framework. So the Django REST framework is a way of building, it's basically just an entire framework built for building REST APIs on top of Django. So um, I've built REST APIs in Python, both in Flask and Django REST. I do still find myself net, like gravitating towards Django. I'm a big Django fan. Um, I really like their ORM. I really like their development style. Flask is great. A lot of my micro frameworks are like really small uh APIs I tend to write in in Flask, but for bigger projects, and I actually have one big project that I am working on right now that is Django REST. I use Django REST. So let's go ahead and just get started with it. So the first thing we're going to do, just like we did last time, and as if you ever when you're watching me do Python tutorials or Python talks, it's always pretty much going to be this way, um, is we're going to create a virtual environment. So Python 3-m vm tilde slash dot virtual ends, and we're just going to call it DRF for Django REST framework. Okay. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to activate it. Source virtual environments DRF uh, bin activate. Got to spell correctly to make it work. Okay, so now we are inside of our Django virtual environment. For those of you that are unfamiliar with um, virtual environments, a virtual environment is basically what it does. It takes a copy of all of Python and puts it in a specific directory. And then whenever we install packages and stuff, it gets directly installed into that virtual environment. And what it does is it allows us to create isolated environments for our Python packaging so that we don't, if we're developing multiple apps, we don't accidentally install packages that conflict with each other. We don't accidentally upgrade something when we didn't mean to upgrade something. Um, we don't pollute system Python with our packages because th there's a, it's a special problem whenever you have to debug, like, why is your system not running anymore? Oh, it's because I installed this package and now it's polluted the system Python space. So it's definitely an issue, but that's why we use virtual environments. So now that we've done this, let's go ahead and pip install the, the things that we need. So we're going to pip install Django. We're going to install the Django REST framework. We're going to install uh, Black. We're going to install PyLint. We're going to install PyLint-Django. This is just to make my, um, make, make my editor happy for those last three. Black does the auto formatting. I have my VS Code set up to do that. OK, so we have them installed. So the first thing we do is like as we do with all Django projects is we do a Django admin start project. We're gonna call it Tech Talk. Hmm. 
and then we're going to do a dot. So this dot here, if you watched my tech talk two weeks ago, or however long ago it was, I always said I don't like how it creates an extra directory and all that, but if you do that dot, it just creates the thing right there where you want it. And it works really well. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and just you know run our thing. So Python manage.py run server. Let's actually just see that we have a working Django. So if we go to localhost 8000, we refresh, we get the happy little rocket ship that tells us, hey, we have a working uh, Django application. So we're good here. Someone asked if I can do a live session for Django Graphene. I've I've never I've heard of Graphene. I've never actually used it, but I'm ha I'm happy to look into it and maybe keep that as an idea for a tech talk. So that'll be pretty interesting. So today, the application we're going to build is a tiny little library application for managing books. This actually is going to be a start for me to build something that I've actually always wanted to build. So we're going to do Python manage.py library. And as you can see, actually it's not manage.py, manage.py start app library. And now we have a library one. As you can see, a lot of the... So the Django REST framework changes how you write a lot of the code, but a lot of the um, commands, a lot of the base, the base commands that you use for all of this, the just Django management. Um, is very much like it's it's all the same. Like there's really not any, I don't think there's any manage.py commands that I'm going to use today that are different from a normal one. Um okay, so we have a question. Why choose Django for for your Python APIs? This is a great question. So I have a I have a blog post on my personal blog at Mason.dev. I've talked about it very publicly. I have a I have a very simple litmus test that I that I perform for whenever I act. Am I using Flask? Am I using Django? Um, and it's basically two questions. It's, do I need user authentication? Do I want to create an API where people can create accounts or I want it to be, I want to have any sort of auth or do I want to use a database? Um, if any of those are true, I tend to land on Django. Because Django's ORM and just built-in database handling, I feel, is very valuable. I think it's a very good, um, I think, I, I just, I like their ORM. I know you can use SQL Alchemy with Flask. It's another great tool. Um, I feel like you kind of just gravitate towards the one you learn first. I learned and got really good at Django first, so I picked Django. Um, and then with users, Django's built-in authentication um, methods are very valuable, which I might, honestly, that could be an entire another talk is just, should should we talk about that? Um, so yeah, those are my two things. So whenever people ask like, why do you, like I, I do go with Django and like for large scale REST APIs, I find myself going to Django REST framework more and more now. Um, but yeah, that's the answer to that question. Django Graphene is for GraphQL. You know what? I kind of had a feeling Graphene, GraphQL, it makes sense. Um, I don't know a lot about GraphQL. I'd have to learn it. Uh, but if that's what people want to see, I'm happy to do talks on it. My job is to learn and to educate. Okay, so now that we have the, we have Django REST framework installed, but nothing's really happening. It still looks like it's a Django app. So we actually have to tell Django, like we do with almost all of our things, that we have to tell it that we actually installed this app. So we're going to tell it, hey, I installed REST framework. And I also created a library called library, which we do library.apps.librarycontig. So this is a, whenever I first started using Django, I I'd really you used to just put the name of the app there and it worked, but it appears now, and I need to, I need to look into this, but like there's an apps file here in your library app. And I want to pick the right virtual environment real quick because I'm tired of it complaining to me about utility slash dot slash dot virtual in slash dr f bin python there we go okay and basically it creates a configuration that you can use um for your app so now there's actually this is the new in 3.2 right here this actually this line right here is in new in django 3.2 um and it tells you what to set the default auto field so when you create models in django there's always like a primary key installed um and you used to not be able to change what data type that was, but now you can. 
Um, and then the name is library. So as they add more and more stuff to the config, that's why it's now changed. And now you add library.apps. It basically is just referencing library.apps and then the class name library config. And Django knows how to render that and read that and it pulls it up for us. So we've added the library config here. So now we have Django REST framework installed. Let's see if it actually makes a difference when you do a run server. Oh, I can't, that's the wrong thing. Python manage that py run server. Okay, so it's telling me we have unapplied migrations. Let's see if it makes a difference. Okay, so nothing's changed. So we, we've installed it, but we haven't done anything with it. So we're good, so we're good, still good. So now, but this is where this is how I develop Python apps, or this is how I develop Django apps. Sorry, um, is the first thing I typically do is I typically start working on my models. I, I know that I'm going to be doing something with the database, so let's go ahead and create our database here. So the application we're building today is going to be a very simplistic um, library app that I will eventually, you know, expand upon because I really want to build this. I've been wanting to build something like this for a while. So we're going to call it Class Book. We're going to do models .model. And we're going to give it a title equals models.carfield max length is equal to 255. Um, we're going to put num pages equals models.car, not car field, uh, integer field. And I have to remember. Do I have to set a default here? Default equals zero, I think. Yeah. We're going to see. If that messes up, we'll have to fix it real quick. But that should be good. And then we're going to say uh, ISBN 13 equals models.carfield. We're going to say max link equals 13. But the reason we're mostly going to do this is we're going to say blank equals true and null equals true. So what this is basically saying is that we don't have to have this data right here. Um, like it's nice to have, but if we don't have it, it's fine. This is going to come in useful later when we talk about our, um, when we talk about, uh, sorry, serializers. So this looks pretty normal for, for, for a Django app. Okay. So what we're going to do real quick is let's go back over here and let's just do Python manage.py we'll say make migrations. Ooh. Oh, I put black equals true instead of blank equals true. Funny typos. Okay, so we've created a library. So we have our first migration for our library. Now let's do python manage.py migrate. Okay, so not only does this do our library migration, but it's gonna do all of our user migrations. These are the initial migrations you have to do to get any Django app up and running. And then if we do Python manage.py create super user, we're gonna create a super user for us to use in the Django admin. So I'm gonna use mEgger. I'm going to complain about using weak passwords, but we're going to tell it to go away anyway. Okay, so we have a user now. So let's do a Django run server. And then we go here, we go to admin. And we do, I put my username was Mason Egger. And okay, so we have our users, we have our groups, we're in the, the default Django admin. Okay, someone says, but if you have a decimal or date in database, I don't know what that means. So we have our default admin, but we're not, we, we don't see the ability to add and create books. So what we have to do with that is in the admin.py, we actually need to import it. So from dot models import book. And then from here, we simply do admin it's admin site that register let's google it uh, register admin uh, model in admin django i don't remember the exact syntax off the top of my hand head so yeah admin dot site dot register 
book. I think we can just do that. Okay, we come back over here, and now we have the access to books. So now we can create books. Yes, okay, so uh, Abel asks, when should we be doing migrations? Is it necessarily only after editing models and apps? Yes, so you do migrations, that's the 99% of the time you do them there. Um, it's also a good idea to do them at the very beginning. Like, uh, as you saw when we did our make migrations here, it did a lot of like auth and admin and stuff. If you're planning on using this auth or admin panel, maybe you're just doing something with users. Um, you have to do it. Now, if you didn't do it and then waited till you had models, it's going to get pulled in regardless because Django applies, unless you specify only migrate a certain app, it migrates all the apps. Um, but there's typically like a, you need to create your super user um, and do an initial migration for that. You, and actually, to be able to create the super user, you have to do the initial migration. So, yeah, great question. Okay, so now that we have that, we can create a book. So let's go ahead and create a book. Just for funsies, let's add a book. Um, hmm, I love how it just knows, like, titles and stuff. I really need to turn off this auto complete. Uh, let's go with, do I have any books that are, ha, 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 okay. I have the TCP IP guide, which is literally an epic tome that you can use to learn about uh, internet, or you could level your house with it. Um, it's huge. So this is, we're going to put in the TCP IP guide. I show this book off to people whenever they're like, what's the biggest book you own? It's this one. If I, if I dropped it off a first story building, it would potentially like crack the foundation. Um, great book. And there are 1,539 pages in it. Um, and it's a hardback, so 1539. And I don't, actually, I do have the ISBN. It's sitting right here. I'm being extra nerdy today. 1593, nope, that's not, that's, is that the 10 digit? That is the 10 digit. Okay, 1593270047X57995. I think that's it. We're going to see. That was it. Oh, we got this book object one. Ah, I hate when it does that. Let's go back to our models real quick. Let's define uh, straight, the STR. So def dunder STR self um, return self dot title. And then if we refresh this page, and now it says the TCP IP guide. So we're good. Oh, the book that I have, if you want me to put the name, it's the it's the TCP IP guide, and it's by No Starch Pr the the uh it's a no starch press book. It's huge. It's yellow, looks like a honeycomb. Um, someone asks, can we re can we migrate only the mo okay? So actually there was two questions. So there's this one. How to use Mongo Engine with MongoDB using Django REST framework? Can you show us an example of a CRUD operation? So I don't know anything about the MongoDB stuff, but I can totally look that up. And yes, we are we're slowly building forward to building a fully functioning CRUD app here in the Django REST framework. Um, and then we ask someone asks. Can we migrate only the model changes for the app itself? Does the CLI uh, yes, you can. So if you only wanted to do a migration, you would do, um, yes, exactly. Make migrations app name. So Python manage.py, and then you would do make migrations library. And there aren't any here, so it's not going to do anything. And then it's what it's going to, uh, let's, let's add something just to, just to do this. Um, we'll say color. I, if you can notice, I'm intentionally avoiding author um, because author actually would require, would to do it right, I would need to create a many to many field, create another model, and I don't want to do all of that today. So we're just going to say models.car field, and we're going to say max length equals, I don't know, 32. If your color is more than 32, and we're going to say blank equals true null equals true because I don't want I don't want to have to require that okay so now if we came down here we would do Python manage.py make migrations uh, library 
Okay, so now as you can see, it says it's created this in a 002 uh, book color copy. Um, hmm. And then what we can do now is Python manage.py SQL migrate. Uh, that's how I used to do it. Zero zero zero. Uh, library zero 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 two. Right. Yes. So that will show me the entire SQL that's going to go in, and then Python manage.py migrate uh, adds that. So I have people. I, someone in the chat. Louise is asking in the chat, please for a date field and a decimal field. So yeah, why not? Let's do that. That's easy. So <clears throat> excuse me. Let's do a uh, pub date. So for public publication or publish date equals models dot date field. Um, I'm going to set all these equal to blank equals true, null equals true. I don't want these to be required, but I do want them in case I want them. So in the decimal field price equals models dot decimal field blank equals true, null equals true. Okay. Oh, yes. Close the question. There you go. That's not what I wanted to do. Come here. You. Here. Okay. So let's do Python manage make, py make migrations. Uh, decimal field must define a decimal places attribute. Okay. I don't know if I've ever actually even used it. So decimal places equals two. I don't know if I've ever actually even used this before. Decimal field before. Max digits. Great. Max digits equals, I don't know, how expensive can a book get? We'll say eight. Might be a really rare book. Like like a, okay, we got that. Python manage.py. Great. There you go. Now it's there. We come back over here to the TCP IP guide. Oh, I have to actually run. Uh, Python manage.py run server. There we go. And now we have all these things. We can say that the book was published today. The price was, I know, actually, I know the price of this book. It was a $100 book. Um, and the color is yellow. So now we have a book. We're good. Anywho, that's what you do with the models. Now, the where Django, uh, where Django REST framework gets a little bit different is... You can manually do a lot of stuff. So if you read the Django REST framework documentation, like the first tutorial will teach you about serialization. And then the second tutorial teaches you about requests and responses. But basically it's all leading up to, it starts out really broad and then narrows down the scope to how can we do this the quickest and easiest? So that's actually what we're going to do today. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a serializer. So a serializer is what allows us to serialize our object model and validate helps us validate if it's okay. It creates something for us to easily input into the database. So we're going to create serializers.py. This is a special file that you you I think you can use these in the regular Django, but this is very like this is necessary for for the Django REST. So from REST framework, import serializers seri Alizers. Sometimes it's hard for me to spell. And from models or from dot models import book, we're going to create a book serializer. So class book serializer serializer dot model serializer. So this is saying that we're going to create a serializer based off of our model. Then we do class meta. And we say the model that we're using is book. Then we're going to tell it what fields are available. So the fields we have available, let's go back to our models. No, oh, I don't need a break point. Go away. Uh, do, 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 models. So title, num page, let's just copy. And we'll paste that. And then we'll just delete that. 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 So we have to basically put all of our fields in here. So title. Uh, yeah, that looks. 
uh, the number of pages that we have. We have to tell it exactly what data might be coming in and what we want to actually serialize for. If any of these were auto data, like maybe like we had like an auto create, that would be fine. And we wouldn't want to actually, uh, we, if we don't want people to be able to change it, we don't want them to be able to do it. So the other one that we need to do real quick, actually, I think we're good for that. And then the other thing we're going to do is we're going to add what's called extra AWRs. This is going to say, hey, we have some items that we know we don't, like they're not required. The only two things required for this model is title and num date. So publish date is not a required one. So we're going to required colon false. So that's this way. If someone does send it in and it needs to be serialized, then we don't want, then we don't have to do it. So then we're also going to do uh, price. We'll do the same thing. Let's just copy and paste this because it's pretty much the same code. Except for just changing. So price, color, ISBN 13. Price. Color. ISBN 13. So that allows us to ignore the successfully ignore those. If if we if we get that sent in, and we don't care. And also, this is serializers, not serializer. Fields equal. There we go. Good. So this allows us to do all of that. Now, one thing that we are going to add here, real quick, is we're going to add the private key, the primary key. This will allow us to be able to identify the book later. Um, the, what we're the way that we're going to do this is that we are like whenever we create our CRUD, if we want to delete or update, we're going to need the pri the primary key of it. Um, you could create an ID field here. In reality, the ISBN 13 is a unique number and should be a unique number, and you could do it that way. Um, for the sake of this demo, we're not going to do that today. So we have that. Now let's go to our views. Let's create some views so we can actually create a working re uh, REST API. So we're going to do from REST framework import generics. So generics are a special part of Django REST framework. It's here in the class-based. It's down here at the bottom. It's a special mix-in that allows us to just create generic views. So like a lot of REST APIs implement a lot of the same functionality. Do we want list, create API view, retrieve, update, destroy API view? Basically like what we're saying is for this one, you can list and create and it will, we have that view already written for you or you can retrieve, update, destroy. Like this is this is the core of a lot of uh, CRUD, CRUD apps. So we don't really need much more than that. So what you could do with this is to say, say we did something else. So we could use something is it here like this? So this is another way we could do it. We could just say, hey, if this was book detail, we could create a method for the get, a method for the put, a method for the delete, a method for the post. What, what our generics are doing is it's taken all of this code, which is like very like straightforward, get the key, put it in, or get the data, return the data, you know, delete the data. And we're just gonna do it a little bit easier using these. So. First, we import the generics. Let's go back over here. Then we need to import our book from dot models, import book. And then from dot serializers, import book serializer. We just say class book list generics dot list create API view. And we basically say the query set. So the set of objects that you're going to be looking over are book.objects.all. And the serializer class that you're going to use, serializer class, excuse me, is the book serializer. And that's it. That just created our list and our get and our post. We don't need anything else outside of that. And then to do our update, delete, uh, patch, all of those where you actually have to be able to specify the, the like an identifier, generics.retrieve 
update, destroy, API view. So, but see here, like we have retrieve. If you just wanted to be able to get it, you could do that. If you wanted to retrieve an update, you have that. If you want to be able to retrieve, destroy, and then all of them. So basically, we want to retrieve, we want to be able to update, we want to be able to destroy. So we do that. We're going to select that one. Each of these just gives us a very generic API. As soon as you want to do something more complicated in your API, you will have to come over here and do this sort of implementation. But you'd be surprised how much you can get away with. Um, and it's the same thing. It's actually the exact same code as this. The query set is still the book object and the serializer class is still our book serializer. So we have, who's complaining? It's from dot models import book. It might, this actually might be just the normal complaint. Yeah. For some reason, the pilot Django plugin that I have never likes like it says that there's no objects model, but I mean, I guess there is, there is though, and it works. So it always complains about that. If we refresh this page over here, as you can see, we're good. So let's go ahead and go to, let's make a URLs file here next. So now we've created the view, but we need to be able to route people to this specific view. So let's do that. So from django.urls import path, from dot import views, we want to import our current views, and then we're going to say URL patterns equals, and all of our URLs go inside of this list, and we're going to say path. So we're going to say books. So our book API will be at books, and it's going to be views dot book list dot as view. Let me do that real quick. Then we say path books slash int the primary key use dot book detail dot as view and we have to do those as methods here okay these are our urls we save that and this basically now sets us up to where we'll have endpoints for our get our post our put update destroy and all those other ones. Uh, yeah, so let's finish this off and then I'll come back to some questions that I see in the chat. Um, the last thing we need to do here to get something to work is we come over here to Tech Talk and we need to open this URLs page. This URLs page is what handles all of the URLs of our, um, of our applications. So we come over here and we say, we put include and then all we need to do over here is path at this path in at the root path essentially include library dot urls name equals library okay so let's restart oh i made a boo-boo did i forget a comment at the end forgot the comment at the end okay so now if we go to localhost admin slash books we're going to get the Django REST framework default option. So now we actually, so the Django REST framework has its own built-in views, its own working API views. So we don't actually need this. And if you're using a REST API, you might not ever actually use this. However, um, it is a really valuable thing to have if you ever wanna do some quick testing or just to see that it works or get a little bit of data off of this. So we could here, let's say, Let's find another book. Do I have another book around me? If not, I can just look back at my bookshelf. Um, what's on my bookshelf? Absolute free BSD. We're gonna go with that one. Absolute free BSD. Number of pages, we're gonna estimate around 350. It's a big book. Um, and all of these are not required, so we do a post. Okay, it did a post. If we go to our admin site, Go to books. There it is. Books right there. Now, as you can see, this is potentially problematic. There's no authentication around this. We can just do whatever we want. I'm also going to show you real quick the actual REST API part. So I'm going to go here to another one. And we're going to do HTTP post localhost colon 8000 slash books. 
not typed this morning. Oh, I did a post. Sorry. I wanted to do a get. Okay, so this, we do a get and it shows us our books. This is the data that we have. There is no color, no ISBN, price and publish data, null. Title is absolute free BSC. So we did a get there. Let's go ahead and do a post. So book, post to books. Um, we're going to say the title is Hunger Games. And we're going to say it has num pages equals uh it's a young adult novel so 150 and we've added it and if i wanted to delete one http delete uh local host colon 8000 slash books uh hmm, what's the primary key on hunger games three let's just delete that one that's three Did I make a boo boo? What's it telling me? Hmm. Do I not need this trailing slash? There it goes. Okay, I didn't need the trailing slash. So it is a little bit picky about that. There's an what's known as the append slash thing that you can do inside of Django, which if it if you forget a slash, it puts it there and it's a uh, API sometimes. But yeah, now if we come back over here. And we do a refresh, we see that the Hunger Games was deleted. So I bet you're going, oh, this is kind of, uh, because there's no authentication around this. And you're right, that is that is a little bit, that is pretty disturbing. The good thing is adding authentication is relatively straightforward. Before I add off, I'm going to answer a couple questions from the Slack, or from the chat. chat. So, yes. Uh, Sunedit said that we could have just used all uh, in the field option. We could have done that. I do like typically manually listing some of them out because I like to exclude a few or include a few. This time we didn't really do it, but I do tend to map them out. It makes it a little bit, whenever you're reading the code, if you come like you come across the serializers, it's just easier to read. I don't have to go to models to see. It's a, it's a, it's a preference. Um, what do you think is the best use for it? Um, I love use... Um, I love using Django for just for almost any REST framework in general. Like, I think it's a really good framework. Um, so yeah, just building building REST APIs that are connected to databases. So yeah. Uh, and then I think, uh, Zach asks, can you show API search with different fields? I'm assuming that's like a doing a, like a get, but not on the, like doing a get but using like the HTTP local host colon 8,000 slash books slash one, getting that data. If you're asking about being able to filter through different model fields, um, I won't be able to cover that in this one, but I might be able to cover that in a future one. Search from view page. Uh, no, I don't know if I'll be able to in implement a view, a search from views this time. So unfortunately not. I might be able to do it next time if we do like a more in-depth one, but this time we're just kind of covering uh, some of the basic stuff. Okay, but great question. Uh, yeah, I, so filter query would be cool. If I do a graphene one, like when we talk about uh, GraphQL, that's a fun one to do. Um, I know Django DRF has a way of doing that. If I get to the very end and I have some time, I might read some docs and see if I can implement it real quick. But looking at my time already, we're already running out of time. So, but great question. I'm going to keep that in the uh, back of my mind and I might do, I might literally do a whole nother uh, talk around some of the more advanced stuff we can do. Okay. Uh, yes, the Django REST app does depend on the Django RM, to my knowledge. So, um, yeah. Uh, Node.js or Django API, which one is faster? On line speed, Node.js is faster. So Python apps are known for being slower than, than JavaScript APIs and stuff. I like writing Python. Um, if you know how to properly architect your production systems and you, you can scale them, you can, you can get Django apps to where they're running at production speeds. I, I believe, if I, I'm not mistaken, like Instagram is the largest Django app that I know of. So it can be run at billions of users scale. So um, 
I prefer to write Python over, over Node.js, so that's why I choose Django. Okay, the next part we're going to do is we're going to add some auth. So really and truly, adding auth isn't terrible, terribly difficult. Um, all we have to do is from REST framework, import permissions. And then what we can do here is we can say permission classes equals, and then you could have a lot of different permission classes here. We're only going to need one. So permissions dot, and then the one we're going to use is is authenticated or read only. Um, that's what we're going to use. So essentially, and let me grab this and uh, it's not doing it. Okay, so let's do it like over this. So the permissions is, is authenticated or read only. So this allows it to where this is a public API that you can browse, but if you want to be able to post or delete or make any changes, um, then you will need to be authenticated. There are a lot of these different permission classes that you can do. I actually, and they're not difficult to write. I actually had to write a custom one for, uh, for a project that I was working on. So they're relatively straightforward. And then you basically just copy this and you paste it in both. And now if I were to come over here and were to try to do a delete on this book, authentic credentials were not provided. So I can't do it. If I want to do that post again, because Hunger Games isn't there right now, I still can't do it. Um, so what I can do now, though, is I can't authenticate. So I can do dash A for authenticate. M Egger colon, and then the password I used was Sammy123. It's my... And now I was able to access it. So... Now it's there. Now, if you've also, I do want to say, if you've never, if you're looking at my commands and you've never seen this tool, I'm going to put it here in uh, in chat. It's called HTTPIE, and it's my favorite little tool. I never, I don't really curl anything anymore because, as you can see, it makes it really nice. Um, cool. Okay, so someone asked, I mean, what is the best you to use API view set or generics Etsy for your most use? Okay, so that's a good question. So when do you need to use API view sets and when do you need to use generics? Um, generics are exactly that. Whenever you're building a generic API, whenever it doesn't have any, there's no special thing. So like if you're just creating a CRUD app where you want to create, update, delete, you just want data in, data out. There's no reason not to use a generic there because you're not doing anything special. Now, say what I want to do with this app, and like this is an open source project that I'm working on, is whenever someone posts and creates a book in this API, I'm going to make ISBN required. And then what it's going to do is it's going to call a secondary API to fetch all of the data that I need from uh, from a book API, pull it in, and then create a, like, a database so that way I can have my own little like library ca card catalog system at my house, and then all I do is put in the ISBN, it pulls the title, it pulls the author, pulls all of that data. That's a custom one. Like, that's not generic. Most people don't do that. So I would have to use an API view set at that point because I need to write custom code in there. So when you're using, when you need custom code, I would use view sets. But if you're just doing create, read, update, delete, and there's nothing custom about it, use the generics. They're a lot easier to use. It's a lot less code. Um, and it's optimized by the people that created the framework. Uh, for authentication, which are you going to use, token auth or JWT? I'm going to use token auth. We're going to get to that in a second. Um, is it safe to use public proxy with Puppeteer on production? I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know those questions. Flask or Django, which one is better for you? I'm going to literally, at the end of this talk, I'm going to link to my blog post that I have on my personal site that explains this because uh, I think I think it's it's a good read. Um, but remind me at the end of this, this, this talk and I'll get to that. So. We've added authentication, but right now it's just basic auth. And basic auth is not very, very nice. I don't really like basic auth that much. Um, a lot of people don't. So what we're going to do is we're going to add some token auth. So let's go to our settings file. And in our thing here, we're going to say rest framework dot auth token. So the Django rest framework already has Oh, look at that. The magic voice in the sky found my blog post. Um, so the REST framework already adds an auth token. So it is uh, like we don't have to really implement it. We just have to install it. And then we come down here. Uh, oh, I haven't even added that part yet. Did I forget to add that part? Oop, it's not in my stuff. Let me go to my code. So for those of you that are wondering, I usually write these apps out the day before 
And then I leave myself notes on all the things that I need to do. And sometimes I forget some. Oh, that's why I haven't done it yet. Okay, cool. I'm getting ahead of myself. It happens. So now we need to just create a little REST framework uh, directive here. And I'm going to copy and paste this from my notes because I don't feel like typing it all. So the default authentication to, uh, classes, we're going to support token auth, we're going to support basic auth, and we're going to support session authentication. Now, I eventually have to figure out how to make basic auth kind of because eh, if you turn off basic off, it doesn't work from the thing. You're right. But it also then turns basic off on, on the Django admin and it goes away. Um, so eventually one day I'm going to have to solve that on my own problem. So we add those two things. And then we actually have to stop our server because the, because we imported this app, this app has models. So if I were to try to go here, uh, let's go back here. I broke this yesterday. How did I break this yesterday? Users? Oh. Oh, click on tokens, kaboom, it doesn't work. No such table, auth table. We have to actually do a Django migrate here because the auth tokens brings in its own set of migra uh, things. And Django run server again. Oh, by the way, if you see me just type Django my run server or like in my, per I do enough Django development that in my 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 dot .files, my dot .zshrc, I have alias python manage.py to Django. <laughs> this makes my life easier. Okay, so we come here, we add a token. Uh, I want to create it from my mEgger user, and there's the token, and I can see the token, and we're good. So let's copy that token, and let's do HTTP. Oh, first off, let's export this token. So we're going to call it my token equals paste. So we have my token, and then now let's create a new book using our token. So HTTP post local host colon 8,000 slash books slash, we're going to say the title of the book is uh, Catching Fire. I'm on a Hunger Games thing today. And the uh, num pages is equal to, we'll say 150 again. And then we'll say authorization colon token space is set to my token and we've created the new book so if we go back to books catching fire is now here in our database so that's how you would do auth tokens they're relatively straightforward um and it makes life really nice i love them i i use these uh i tend to use token based auth whenever i build my apis i need to look at how to do the jwt stuff um i haven't done it yet excuse me <laughs> But I know that they're uh, that's really popular now. And then we're going to do one more thing today. Uh, and it's just kind of like a little nice to have. So we're going to do pip install DRF spectacular. It's really spectacular. This allows us to um, do auto documentation using like swagger type docs. So if we go back to our settings and we go to installed apps, we're going to say DRF spectacular, comma, and then down here, we need to say, we need to add this to the bottom, default schema class DRF underscore spectacular dot open API dot auto schema. There are some other schemas you can choose here, but... Um, for this one, this is the one we're going to use, the, the auto schema for open a, the open API spec. And then we need to go into our URLs here. And if I do path schema slash is... Oh, I need to import some stuff first. So from erfspectacular.views import spec spectacular swagger view and spectacular view. Uh, API view. Okay. And these are just v different views that we can do here. So we would do from the schema, we say spectacular. For some reason that's a hard word for me to spell and say at the same time. 
dot as view. We're going to say the name is equal to schema. And then the last one we're going to do is path docs slash comma uh, spectacular swagger view dot as view. The URL name is equal to schema. So this is basically where is our schema located? And the URL that we just did up above is schema. So we're going to say, hey, it's at schema. Then we're going to say name equals docs. Save it. And now if we start our server again, Django run server, and we go to localhost slash docs, we should see automatically generated Swagger doc for us. So as you can see, our views that we have here, which will open up right here, has a get, a post, a get for the ID, a put, a patch, a delete. So this created all of our things automatically for us. Hmm. Wonder what the little lock means. And I can't do this. No, the modal's bigger than the close. There we go. Uh, this presentation will be available after. Yes. Interesting. The fact that it's got, what does that lock mean? Intriguing. Because if you look at it, the put, the patch, the delete, and the books, those should be locked. And I feel like that's opposite. So I'm curious about that. But I'll do it. That's something else. You can't also authorize. Oh, I can just put my token API, my token auth here. That's kind of cool. Let's see if it works. I've never tried it. Let's go back to tokens. Let's go here. Oh, I don't need to go there. I just need to copy this. Copy. Authorize. Close. Well, not everything's locked. What does that mean? Well, let's just execute it. Try it out. Execute. We've got all the data. Let's do a uh, delete. Let's... Ooh, I can't put it. Oh, we have to try it out. Let's say book two. Execute. Let's see if we lost any books here. Who was private key two? was absolute free BSD. So if we go back to the admin page, or let's just run this one again. Let's just execute this one again. Is absolute free BSD gone? Yeah, it is. What do you know? How neat. Cool. So that's automatic swagger docs. And it worked. And I'm really like, uh, one of the cool things you can also do with this is say, so come here, let's say, actually, I'm curious how you would do this for the gits and stuff. So whenever I've done this, I well, let's just try. Uh, get some info. Get some info right there for the get, and let's see if it does. It doesn't do it for that one. How neat! Oh, because it's the wrong one. Uh, what else uses just post? See, okay, so it does it for both of them. That's a little bit irritating. Um, I'm curious how you would separate these out using generics. If you didn't use generics, though, if you were using just these, like this get, you would put, you could put the, you could put this data, like you could put data inside, like inside the docu comments of this, the here doc, that's what they're called, right? Yeah, PyDoc. Um, you could put them in here and they would be specif specific on the get and stuff. Okay, well, let's check with the questions, but that's really all I have to show for the day. This will be available after. There's going to be, a te this YouTube video will be available. Um, so as soon as this is over, you will be able to access it. Are there any more questions before we wrap it up today? You can start by learning Django REST framework by going to the Django REST framework site. I will say that like the tutorials start at like the, like they start off very complex and they eventually get you to the like 
easier stuff. So like this is like using like creating your own serializer, creating your own create and update. And then it's like, or you could just do this. And there's a lot of that where it's like, or you could just do this, or you could just use these built-in ones, like the model serializer, like I did. Like we saw how simple ours was uh, versus like literally creating one for every single one. Um, it allows for a lot of really awesome customization. But at the same time, like if you're just trying to get work done quickly, then uh, you're probably going to want to like usually read the tutorial and then scroll down to the bottom and see if it says, or oh, you could just do this. Because that's exactly what this class-based one view does. Is it teaches you all of this. And then you wind up with generic uh, base classes and you're like, oh, that's all I had to do instead of all of this. So. Awesome. Well, thank you everyone for attending today. Um, I don't see any more questions. So. I'm going to go ahead and give it, I'll give it another like minute. Let me pull up. I can stop sharing now. So I can just go to there. I can go to this. Um, and let me just, I'll pull up the YouTube site. Cause sometimes it takes a little bit of time for StreamYard to get our things through. So, okay. I don't really see any more. So thank you for, yeah. Thanks for the, Thanks, Paul. Appreciate it. Uh, thank you, everyone, for attending. And I will be back next week because scheduling is hard and because one of my coworkers took off. I will be back next week with a a Django REST API, uh, sorry, Fast API talk. Um, and then I believe after the Fast API talk, I'm going to do a tech talk on deploying Python applications. That's where we're going to talk about how to deploy all these things. So we've talked a lot about building. We've done Flask. We've done Django. We've just done Django REST framework. We're going to do Fast API. Um, and then we're going to spend an entire time talking about how to deploy these, specifically how to deploy them on DigitalOcean, how to deploy them on virtual machines, how to deploy them on DigitalOcean Kubernetes, and how to deploy it on um, at platform. We'll see if we get the Kubernetes. Um, but yeah, you should definitely come and see these. And if you want to play out with these, you can deploy all of these applications to App Platform. Let me pull up my tutorial real quick. Um, so here it is. So if you want to get started and you want to deploy a, a DigitalOcean, you want to deploy a... Uh, a Django app or a Django REST framework app to DigitalOcean. I have written a how to deploy your Django app to app platform. So it is specific to Django. So you'd have to like deploy a Django app and then kind of take it here. But you can totally deploy these on DigitalOcean's app platform. It's our platform as a service offering that gives us, um, basically just lets you upload your code. Or you can do them on droplets and do those. I'm going to be talking about that in a couple weeks. So yeah, so feel free, have fun. Um, and I'll see y'all the next time. Have a good day, everyone.